Cordyceps infection is real. The virus that infected almost the whole world in The Last of Us isn't just fiction, instead it's based on a real fungus that exists. Well, I know the whole world is basically still screwed up right now. So why not to talk about a potential virus that can doom us even more? The story behind this video is that I beat The Last of Us many years ago and I wanted to resist it before playing the second part. But the game had a much harder impact on me with the whole thing what's going on in the world right now. How did a transmitted disease get from a bat to a human? How can a virus jump species like this? So instead of talking about the bat virus... That's a bat! Yeah, it's a bat! It's a mouse with wings! Let's talk about the fungus. That could potentially spread to humans. Sounds like fun, am I right? The Last of Us portrayed us a history of a dark and realistic modern day history, where the mutated strain of a cordyceps fungus begins to spread in the United States in 2013. In several months, roughly 60% of humanity was either killed or infected by the virus. Now, the first part of this video will be dedicated to the story of The Last of Us. How the virus spreads, the different stages it evolves and so on. And in the last part I will be talking about the real virus. Many of us consider that the infected highly aggressive enemies we fight in The Last of Us are some sorts of zombies. We saw throughout the years of cinema and games many different types of zombies. We saw zombies magically raised from the graves and tombs and walking brain dead and trying to snack on our flesh. But movies like Left 4 Dead and N28 Days Later actually explained us that the zombies in their movies aren't reanimated corpses but rather people who got infected with a rage virus that made people go crazy and lose their minds. If we take a look at Resident Evil in the Umbrella compilation, the whole virus thing goes even more in depth. But that's an idea for another video, which I will make if you would like to. But now I will ask you the question, do you know the difference between a classic 80s slow walking brain eating zombie, the left 4 dead rage virus infected zombie and the Resident Evil tentacle looking zombie? Well, they are all fictional. But this is where The Last of Us is a bit different as it takes inspiration for a real fungus named... Yeah, those two words. As I'm barely speaking English, I'm not even trying to pronounce that. So, it's turning their victims into rotted corpses filled with fungus. And it takes control of their brains so they don't have any willpower at all. The Last of Us take on a real fungus virus is something that many people didn't know at first glance, or even at all. But it gives the game a certain scientific background and an unsettling layer and depth in the game. What many games don't do, as we are still somehow living in isolation, I looked at the game from a whole nother perspective than 4-5 years ago when I first played the game. The game starts with a boom, no I mean literally with an explosion. Where we basically learn that the real equivalent of the fungi has mutated. Now the first thing that was in my mind was Plague ENC. Wait, what? And it messed me up even more. When I played the Plague ENC, I always named my virus Diarrhea, so the world had basically a diarrhea outbreak. Back to the video. Basically, the fungi was able to mutate to a state where they could also infect living human beings, turning them into living mushroom-like zombies. As the original virus is only attacking insects, the story explains us that it is possible that the first virus infected a insect, then it jumped to a monkey and then to a human. As we see that the animals are wandering around in The Last of Us but they aren't infected, but there is a certain possibility that they can carry the virus. There are two possibilities of how you can get infected. The first would be bitten in the spores and the second would be throughout body fluids or bitten by an infected. When the infected that fungus reaches our brains it begins to develop so our own body becomes the breeding ground for the fungus so the fungi will act as a parasite what is scary because the victim is still conscious where the fungi is working inside his body the infected cordyceps will evolve throughout few different stages show it to me the first stage would be the incubation process. This process begins as soon as the victim is transmitted with the disease. It takes approximately 1 till 2 days until the fungus reaches the brain. The results are that the victim will display aggressive and violent behavior. The process ends with the phase when the cordyceps has taken control of its victim. 
second phase is called the runners. The fungus sprayed most of the brains and it comes out from the eyes of the victim. The victim in the final stage are screaming and moaning, what gives us indication that the victim is still consciously alive and trying to resist and fight the fungus but without any success. The runners are very aggressive and will attack everyone in sight, which could be also explained as a method of how to spread the disease. Now we come to the third stage, where the victims evolves into a stalker. In this stage the fungus had plenty of time to spread throughout the body. The stalkers are easily recognizable because the fungus will often grow out of the eyes and head, leading to a disturbing image. As so the vision of the stalker begins to diminish and the fungus again mutates, giving the victim ability of echolocation. So it's the same principle what pets are using. Ha! It's all related to bats somehow. I knew it. So what echolocation does is to use sound to see the world around. So the victim uses special noises to know how to locate the victims, but it still has somewhat of a eyesight. As many years roll by, the stalker evolves into a clicker. It is a very high stage in the process when the fungus overtakes almost the whole head of the victim and some body parts are protected with the fungus layer, acting as a shield. The clicker is completely blind and it only relies on echolocations and the sound what the stalker made are involved into precise clicking sounds. What helps the clicker to find his prey? Now the fungi has overtaken full control of the body and the brain and the victim doesn't resist the orders of the fungus anymore. As we reach 10 years we come to the last stage of the evolution we will talk about today in this video as it's based on only on my playthrough on the first game. Now if you wanna see a video like this for the last of us 2 please comment down below or I can make a standard RPG review video. Now the last stage is called bloater. Now this is the rarest stage in the victim's evolution. What the f*** is that? Goddamn bloater! And it's not common that the victim evolves to this stage. Bloater has many layers of thick fungus acting like a shield and protection to his inner parts. They are also carrying bombs with fungus which he can throw to easily infect and spread the fungus. There is still a fifth stage, let's say, and that's death. Even if the victim dies, if the body was on a high enough stage of evolution, when he dies, the body starts slowly to decay, and the fungus are using his body to try to maximize its growth, and trying to spread as much as they can, so they can repeat the cycle on another victim. At the beginning of the video I talked about the real fungus what really exists. It can attack various bugs. Now the huge difference between the last of us fungi and the real equivalent of that virus, the real fungi wants to feed off its victim and not to use the victim to eat and infect others. The fungus called, yeah this neat word on the screen, can attack N species called Campanthus leonard, I hope I pronounced that right. Now when the ants get attacked by the fungi it can basically enter the bloodstream and it travels to its brain where he can rewire the brain to be under the control of the fungi. But what is really unique is that the researcher David Hughes found out that this type of a virus can create a second nervous system around the nervous system from the end and hijack it so the fungi can use the body for his purposes. Also this version of fungus can transmit throughout itself nutrition and information, but it doesn't touch the brain, so the brain is fully functioning. What the fungus also does, besides growing slowly out of the ant's body, is to search for a perfect spot for growing on a leaf. Then the ant performs a so-called death grapple, where the ant bites into a leaf so it can die in place, so the fungus can remain in the area perfect for growth. It will grow a fruit-like ball out of the ant, from which which will the sports spread and land on other victims? Now comes the one million dollar question. Can the fungus attack humans? Quick answer, yes, but with a twist. Because the humans have a much advanced body than a bug, we can easily fight off the fungus, thanks to million years of evolution. But the researcher David Hughes also tells us it isn't impossible, as 60% of viruses jump from an animal on a human at one point in history. So you are scared? 
because I am. Now, bird flu and AIDS would be such an example. AIDS was contracted from chimpanzees to humans, even if it's not dangerous to chimpanzees, it's claimed over 35 million human lives. Now, is it possible we get a zombie outbreak? Well, still probably no, or not to that degree even. If the fungi attack humans, it would be somehow visible. And we could take breathing protection like in The Last of Us. And one more thing is that the fungus wouldn't prosper in cold areas, which means that the scientists, health organizations and the military could travel to a cold area to develop the cure to fight back. Now that's all for this video. I didn't want to jump too deep in the pure lore of The Last of Us, but I hope you enjoy it. This was really a weird and obscure video, don't you think? It was really interesting in talking about such a things like viruses in a game. If you want a second video where I dive only in the lore of The Last of Us 1, please comment down below and of course in the lore of The Last of Us 2. Now please remember to check out my Patreon, destroy the like button, share the video, subscribe if you're new and that's all from me now and I see you in the next one. Snorky over and out.